Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to more Rule of Rose. After the last chapter's tumultuous end, we find ourselves back in the filth room, alone on a stormy night. But we do find a new story here, the stray dog. Now, this particular story is actually very similar to the story of Peter and the Wolf. Just wanted to make sure I didn't get a good shot of the cover there. It's a pretty strange looking dog. But this story does tell the tale of another little girl, seems to be bedridden, who, well, tried to get attention from her peers by scaring them with a tale of a stray dog that would start to come after them. But after the stray dog never appeared, people just kind of stopped paying attention to the little bedridden girl. Until one day, the girl came forward, saying that the stray dog was really here. And yet again, no one would pay her any heed. And it was on that particular day that the stray dog did indeed come and gobble them all up. another macabre tale to add to our pile. But after the last chapter's rather odd end to the Aristocrats Club, I kind of wonder how things are going to work out now. Also needed to free up some space here. Actually had a lot more items from a previous save that I just kind of left in my inventory. I will be keeping some of it though, especially the weapon that goes along with our current outfit, that is a tennis player. But with plenty of inventory space now freed up, we can pick up a healing item. And we can start our journey through the orphanage on this, well, rather atmospheric evening. I actually really do like the pitter-patter of the rain and the crack of thunder and lightning outside. assume they might be talking about what we did to Wendy. <laughs> Though their response now seems to be rather different for Jennifer. Kinda odd. So the crying princess here is hiding from us. Yet again, we get a rather odd curtsy, rather than just a curt response. Maybe they have some type of respect for us now. But normally, our actual destination would be downstairs, and really most of the doors are still locked, so our path is pretty linear. But by exploring just a little bit, we do find a few additional healing items. So it just gives us a chance to enjoy this, well, rather nice atmospheric background noise. Those are the two healing items we needed to get. Now it's time to head downstairs and see if we can't find the rest of the children.
It's still a bit hard to trust Amanda at this point. It still seems like at any moment she might start lashing out at us if, as if we were that doll she made. And yet again, we are not really met with any ill feelings. People are treating us rather nicely at this point. Hidden away in the shadows, we actually find the three upper classmen, the royalty if you will. Let's see what they have to say. Greetings, Princess. Please forgive all that I've done. Greetings, Princess Jennifer. Thank you very much for coming to our new aristocrat club. Greetings, Princess Jennifer. From now on, you'll be our new princess. Now, Princess, please think up a new game. Please lead us. We are yours to command, Princess. Princess, go ahead! Guide us! We need you! We don't know what to do! <laughs> Look, it's windy. It's windy. What? <laughs> it seems that after what we did to Wendy in the last chapter, we gained some measure of respect. And it looks like we interrupted their game from before. Like, can we really trust them? I mean, we found them to be pretty despicable and quite two-faced. But if we examine this chalkboard back here, we see... The, the legend of the stray dog was actually something made up by Wendy. It's actually what she made up to get everyone to turn against Brown. And to inevitably murder him. Still, just, I don't feel like we should trust any character in this game. Is that screams? Yeah, that sounds like female screams. What's going on? Sounds like they're coming from outside. Once upon a time, there was a precious little girl. And yet again, that uncouth and despicable young boy has brought some terror upon us for some unknown reason. But I guess it's time to do our final boss fight with the Master Racket. 
Yes, it's another kind of joke item, but it will do the job well enough. And who we are fighting this time around is Gregory Wilson himself. Or, as the game calls him, Stray Dog. The legend of the Stray Dog has, well, come to fruition. And I can only assume from those screams that something untoward has happened outside. But this particular fight is not that different from when we fought Mr. Hoffman. The hitboxes are still very weird, the invincibility frames are still pretty weird. But in this particular circumstance, we have a much smaller arena to fight in, and really, Gregory is quite nimble. I mean, the main idea here is to try to get behind him, but even then, he'll kind of rear back and still manage to hit you. But the most confusing part of this is that the fight does not end depending on how much damage you do, but rather how much damage is done to you. Because something special happens when Jennifer gets down to about half health. That's right, suddenly, out of nowhere, Brown suddenly appears. Was he actually dead in the bag before? Or does he even really exist? It's kind of hard to say. He does a reasonable job distracting Gregory here, but really, in the end, he goes down on about two or three hits. And he's really not all that helpful. Really, it's just a case of getting in short hits and backing away. I think we only had to hit him about a total of six or seven times for him to go down, so it's not too difficult. I think now it's time to confront that young boy to figure out what exactly his deal is. And with that, we find out the horrible truth of it all. And that Wendy, poor misguided Wendy, just wanted our attention back. But now we start the final, final fight proper. We now have Gregory's gun. And if we take a quick look at it, we see something rather interesting about it, in that it actually has a use function. Now what could that possibly be used for? Well, we'll find out. But also, it seems that it has this particular gun has beautiful engravings on it. But it has one major drawback. It actually only has a single bullet in it. But if we take a look around the yard here, there it's rather odd. We only see the 
clothes of the children. There's no bodies. It seems as if he might have gobbled them up. But with that single shell gone, we're going to use the master racket to finish off Gregory here and hopefully finally get that ending we deserve. that, Gregory has been defeated, <laughs> but things just are not right. This is, this is not the real ending. No, for those with a keen eye, they might have noticed that, well, <clears throat> in between all of Gregory's attacks, occasionally he'll get, he will kneel down, and he'll say, I'm sorry, Joshua. It's at that moment that we actually use Gregory's gun on him. That way we get the actual ending. I'm sorry, Joshua. Yeah. 